All right, we'll just go with this. So thanks a lot, everyone, for making it. We're going to go uh, do a live stream review of FT45 Spindrift, Fans Toys version of a Beachcomber. So, you know, I've been off for a while, but you know I'm always here for you guys for a new Fans Toys release. Thanks to Toy Dojo for sending some over. And for you guys here on the East Coast, you ninjas, uh, you'll get yours very shortly from me. So uh, packaging-wise, nice new artwork. Uh, looks Makes them look a little hefty, but not too chunky which is nice. I think a lot of people are looking forward to this uh, kind of a, a bigger or triple XL. I think somebody put in the chat already version of an Autobot. We got Spindrift here, got his Autobot, uh, his alt mode here. Not much going on on all those sides, but on the back we do have his, um, his product shots of his alt mode and robot mode, him compared with some of the other fans toys releases that we got as of late Warpath, as well as their... I always forget what their bronze name is. Anyway, so you get the idea, and then you get the bio here. So, not much else. All right, out of packaging, you get a couple of things. You get, as usual, an instruction manual. And, hey, PQDZ, how's it going? Uh, also, hi to all the, the regulars, BBO3, good to see you. Jermaine, uh, good to see you. Jonathan Walker, who else did I see here? Uh, Fraxic? Fraxic? I don't even know how to pronounce that. Keck, John Stabler, Justin R., Mike Lorber, and World Be Free 1981, one year older than me. So, in any case, let's get into this. Uh, he does come with instruction manual. This guy's pretty simple. There are a couple of things that they uh, failed to show off, but nothing big. Hey, Deformers, how's it going, man? Hey, Chase. Uh, it's his bio card here. This time I was able to find it. Last time I think I, I misplaced the one for the last release here. And you can see here, again, he has his stats on the back. Really nice plastic stat card, but I don't know about you guys. I really don't care about this all that much. The instructions themselves are actually pretty good. Uh, there's only a couple steps that they kind of skip over. But by and large, this guy's pretty simple, as you might expect from a minibot. But still quite satisfying. He does come in his... Hey, Dare, how's it going? He does come in his um, styrofoam coffin here. Comes in robot mode, like most Fans Toys releases. Let's pull him out here. He has a couple of accessories, two guns, and one alternate head. So let's get these out of the baggies. He has two identical pistols here, which we'll show off. They are pretty standard as far as um, Masterpiece figures go. They have like the little tab handle here. It actually looks a lot like Bumblebee's gun, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let's see what else we got. So we got two of those, and then we got the alternate face, which I think I might like this face a little bit better. I would have liked it a little bit better if it had eyes, but I guess this is the, the toy one, maybe. I, I do like the face grill. Uh, the details there, but I, I liked having the eyes. This one just look, makes it look like he's not a person, or he looks more like, I don't know, like a drone, a droid, or something like that. Something that's not really emoting any kind of emotions. Um, so mine came in mostly transformed correctly. You do need to separate the feet, which are tabbed in quite well. Come on. The only thing I noticed that was not transformed correctly on mine was this little piece here. This is a gap filler. Hey, Winston, how's it going? We just got started, so don't worry about it. So if yours is like that, just flip this up. It fills up the gap here on the front. But uh, one thing I did notice and I don't really like is that there's a huge gap here. Um, it's really for transformation to, so you can get some uh, space here for this to move. But it just looks kind of weird. Um, since we're already talking about how he looks, let's do a quick 360 of this guy. And uh, by and large, he looks really quite nice. He's on the chunkier side, chunkier um, representation of of sea spray. Our favorite like kind of like merman talking Autobot. I never understood why he always talked like he's underwater. I mean, he's not underwater. And even if he was underwater, he, he's a robot. It's not like uh, that should affect his voice at all, really. Um, one thing I did notice after just transforming him once is that uh, the, you guys will probably run into the same thing. Is his ankles get really loose, especially mine on this side. Um, it's not a big deal. You just take a little screwdriver and tighten that up, but I do worry that it's gonna keep stripping more and more over time. 
the other side's not as bad. But by and large, I really do like the look of their spin drift. Um, he might be a little too tubby for me, but you know what? I'm not going to body shame or chassis, chassis shame. Hey, cool guy, Wilson. Oh, his message got re retracted. I don't know what happened there. Maybe he got... Um, uh, no, there's no admins in here. What's going on? Where are my t two regular admins? Anyway, but yeah, if you guys didn't know, this is the second version of the spin drift. Um, we got one not that long ago from Fans Toys that didn't that looked, I think, frankly, really awful. Didn't look accurate at all. It looked really thin and like uh, just looked weird. It didn't look like uh, a G1 representation whatsoever. But this one does look much closer to some of the representation we get in the cartoon as well as uh, other media. And he looks really clean. He does have some stuff going on here, and we'll get into that. But by and large, he looks really quite nice. He does have a ton of die cast. He is pretty hefty. Let's actually... Um, do I have a scale here? Yeah, let me, let me grab my scale real quick, because I know people are going to ask how heavy this guy is. And for, for such a small guy, he is pretty hefty, as you would expect from all fans toys releases. Most of his lower leg is die cast, like his thighs, I think the outer part of his shins, and then parts of his um, feet down here. So he is about 7.2 ounces. That is 202 grams. So pretty hefty for such a small guy. Uh, other parts that are die cast, I'm trying to think. I think some, maybe some parts of his chest are. My hands are already cold, so, you know, the cold test doesn't really work when your hands are cold. Uh, his arms and stuff are not. So, while we're here, let's go ahead and, um, use his accessories. They're pretty standard. They tab in. They're a little bit hard to get in. But there you go, and you can have both of them in there. Um, you don't, I don't think you can have really any other storage. For this mode, because in his alt mode, it goes into the top here and is um, on the back. So I don't think you have any options for that other than storing it into his hands. Um, I've only had him for about, a, you know, five hours or something like that. So I didn't get a lot of um, time to actually just mess around and take a look. Hey, you new tabby, Dr. Diecast. Hey, Deluxe, how's it going? Deluxe always trying to hunt for some thumbs up. Hey, Kato's, how's it going, man? I know we talked about um, me coming on to your uh, your uh, live stream at some point. I don't know if we ever followed up on that. I don't think so. But I have been guest starring a lot of other people's streams, uh, even though I haven't been doing much of mine. But yeah, overall, he looks really great. He does have some metallic flake-looking pieces in the blue. It's not just plain blue. It's going to be hard to see on this low-quality um, uh, resolution that we get from YouTube. But even the some of the white pieces have what feels like maybe some metallic flake or shine to it, which is really nice. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about articulation really quick. His head is on uh, a hinge up and down. He doesn't get too much up and down. He does have a swivel that can go 360. Um, one thing that I will, uh, I will actually talk about is articulation, but it's part of transformation is his whole kind of, uh, this part's all die cast too, at least th these two vertical pieces. Uh, this piece is for transformation, but you can actually use it to have him look down a little bit more. And I actually am okay with that. It's not one of those um, pieces of articulation that are is kind of functionless. Um, and it doesn't break up the sculpt really or anything like that. So I'm actually okay with that. His shoulders rotate around like this. Friction joint rotate out. He can do his um, chest pec deck kind of exercise. So he can get his pectorals moving. He does have a... Bicep swivel there. He has a single jointed elbow. Um, not much range. You get 90, 90 degrees. That's really about it. Um, where he fails is kind of in the wrist joint. Because of the way this is molded and these pieces here, he can open up, like twist a little bit outwards like this, but he can't twist inward at all. Like that's pretty unfortunate. And then he has masterpiece style hands where all four of his fingers. They could have done a double. Yeah, he, they could have done a double joint. But I think also the fact that he doesn't really have any, well, at least one direction wrist direct, uh, wrist articulation is kind of a bummer. Pretty disappointed about that. Oh, one thing I will mention since we're coming down here, um, they talk about it as when they do transformation, but he also has kind of a bumblebee style um, belly, kind of like the original 
MP, what is it, 23 Bumblebee head, um, where you can rotate this around. It doesn't seem to be working right now. It might be because it's blocked. Yeah, it's blocked. I'm dumb. So that's why they don't show you this now. But you can actually put an Autobot symbol here and then flip it so it's not uh, showing in alt mode. We'll show it off a little bit later. Hey, Brian, how's it going? Let's see, where are, we, where are we? He does have a bit of a waist swivel. He can't go too far because it, it starts running into these tabs here. Um, you can actually stretch out the waist to get more articulation here. So uh, that is an option. It's really for transformation. It does obviously make him look kind of goofy, but you can actually hide it a bit more so it's not too bad. So he has a little bit of articulation there. His skirt can move forward. And then he actually has ratchets in his in his uh, forward and friction going out. He does run into uh, a bit of um, molding here, so he can't go too far out like that, but it's really nice. And he has like metal uh, joints here. You can see the shiny chrome metal joints here. So these feel really quite nice. So I'm surprised you usually, we usually don't get something like that in the um, smaller figures. Similarly, he also has ratcheted knees, which are also die cast. And he gets a decent bend. He gets this far, a little bit more than 90 degrees. And they feel pretty good. He does have a thigh swivel, which goes out about this far, and then goes in a little bit, very little, decent enough. And then down here is where he has a whole bunch of ankle stuff. So you can see he has like a double jointed ankle here. Uh, it's really for transformation, but you can make use of it to point up and come down. He does not have, he doesn't have a turn, but he does have an ankle tilt very slightly. You can see right there. It's a decent amount going in. But yeah, you can, you can use this in various ways to get his feet pointed or whatever like that. Um, and then he has really big feet as you might expect. So he has no problem really standing up as long as you get his like kind of legs like this. So I think that's it for articulation. Oh, sorry. And his little propellers or whatever rotate around, which is nice. All right. So before we go into any kind of transformation, let's go ahead and do some comparisons. Um, usually I don't uh, take requests until the end, but you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll pause real quick to do some... Um, of the ones I usually do. And then if we have any kind of request that I can grab real quick, I'll do that. But again, um, my display is not really that accessible where I can uh, grab basically anything I want. So here he is with MP44. Let's see well, who else we have. Here he is with their brawn. Uh, here he is with MP Bumblebee. Version two, it's at forty-five. I don't, I don't remember these numbers. Hey, Niles, how's it going? And then here he is with another sea spray. I only have one sea spray, so unfortunately, I can't compare him to Spindrift One Point But if you go on TFW, and I'm sure others like uh, TM, TM usually does. Uh, comparison video. I don't know why mine's tilted like that. There you go. Um, TM Review usually does a comparison video, and I know he has X Transbots Beachcomber. I mean, sorry, Sea Spray. Hey, Broomin, how's it going? Um, so I'm sure he'll do a detailed comparison of these two. Hey, Super Sport, no problem. So I don't know which one I, I, I like more at this point. Um, I think still. As far as overall looks, I still probably prefer X Transbots. This one has, again, a really nice finish. It just doesn't feel as nice and obviously as hefty as uh, the Fans Toys one here. But as far as the overall look, I think I may prefer him not being as, you know, big belly, beer belly, Energon belly, whatever you want to call it. And the metallic blue here looks really nice. But I don't think you would go wrong with either of these. This guy came with a lot more accessories. Um, this guy's transformation is probably a little bit more fun and satisfying, though. All right, so did we have any quick requests for any comparisons? I might have missed it. Uh, trash, stop stylizing my precious chunky, chunky boy, okay? Uh, all right, well, it doesn't look like we have any... Any requests? Uh, Neptune. Oh, yeah, so Bruman, I got that for you. 
All right, so it doesn't look like we have any other requests. If we have some more, I'll get back to them a little bit later, okay? So let's go ahead. Uh, do we want to do the head install? I mean, the head install is pretty simple. Um, I guess we can do it since we have it. I actually don't know if it will impact transformation at all, though. So you just unscrew this. It shouldn't because of the way the transformation works. It should be pretty, pretty easy. But uh, I haven't actually tried to uninstall the head yet. So this might be very brazen of me to try to do for the first time live. Um, I am realizing it is kind of hard to get to because these this piece is all together. It's kind of hard to actually like get the head split. There we go. Oh, huh, I'm curious. I'm wondering if I can use, because I said I like the grill. I wonder if I could replace... No, it looks like this is all molded. So I was going to say maybe I could replace the, the grill just from the face mask with this one, but it looks like it's one, one piece here. So we'll separate those. Same thing. This is what I get for cutting my fingernails before a review. It's very difficult to get this open now. Come on. All right, Spudger, I need your help. All right, just bear with me, guys. I'm doing this for you. All right, there we go. And it's not a ball peg. It's, uh, you can see it's kind of like a cylindrical. So you need to get this in like so. It has four pegs here. You just sandwich that in. And then you got your small Phillips head that will go into the back. Tighten everything up. So here he is with the alternate head with no eyes. And now we can go into transformation. So transformation is pretty simple. Um, we'll actually probably start with the legs first. Uh, the legs are pretty easy. First thing we do is come down. Oops. Oh, so this is one of the things I was going to talk about. Uh, these pieces, these toes are on, on uh, ball joints and on the double hinge. They tend to come off fairly easily. This is like the second time it's happened for me, second or third time. So yeah, just be just be gentle when you pull this out. It does snap back into place, no problem. So I wouldn't worry about breaking it, uh, but it does qu happen quite a bit. And because it's on double hinges, getting it back on is kind of frustrating. So anyway, you flip that up and around like so. Flip this out, flip out this piece. And then what we need to do here is basically get this piece all the way up and around. So you're gonna basically extend this double hinge all the way around and flip this like so. Uh, one thing I will mention while we have it out is that this piece here uh, flips out for alt mode for weapon storage. It's really hard to get to and actually move um, when you're actually in alt mode. So you might want to try to pull it out now and I'll show you why. So again, we're going to bring this all the way out and around like so. Ah, uh, see, that piece is very easy to pop off. Okay, there we go. All right, so we want to get this all the way up and around so it's flush with the top of the, um, I don't know, fuselage? I don't even know what they call it on, the, on, on a uh, hovercraft. Once we do that, we're going to just bring this back around and peg it back into where it was. And then we're gonna close this up. And there's a tab on the side here, like so. So that's really it for that thing. Very simple, same thing on the other side. Let's see if I can do this without popping off this ball joint this time. All right, so flip it up like so. I'm going to open this up. This is on the double hinge right here. Flip that out. Turn this back around. Oh, no, sorry. We can't do that yet. We want to flip this all the way up and out on that double hinge. And again, this is kind of hard to get to like this. So you might want to get it started there. And then we'll just bring this back around. Tab it closed. 
have this closed. Um, there we go. And then while we're here, we can just go ahead and tab the two halves of the legs together, which will make up the front of the hovercraft. Mine's really difficult to get tabbed in all the way, um, but just be careful. Make sure you're not breaking any tabs. And like I said, try to straighten these out now. There we go. All right, so that's the, that's the lower part, very simple. Now we'll deal with the arms. The arms, you're gonna wanna flip this up and then untab the bottom of the arm, flip this all the way around, close it up. And then what they fail to tell you in the instructions is you have to make sure you rotate the bicep 90 degrees and then collapse it in. Um, they don't show you that. Um, so if you're trying to like just close it up like this, you can't because of the molding, you wanna rotate it and then close it. All right, let's see, same thing on this side here. Flip this up, open it, pass the fist through, close it, rotate 90 degrees and collapse that down. All right, next up, we're gonna use that um, extending waist joint I showed before, we're gonna extend that like so. We're gonna untab the backpack. There's a pretty hefty tab on the back here. There we go. And you just wanna extend these two joints and then pull it down on that column. And then you will rotate this all the way around and to the front. Make sure it's straightened out. And then we can collapse it back down. Maybe. Oh, sorry. I have to flip this up first. And then collapse this down. There we go. All right. Now we're basically just pull, pulling things together. So we're gonna flip this out, flip these pieces out that are hiding inside of the belly. We want to flip this space uh, filler up, fold down, down flat. And now we're gonna bring everything together. So bring the arms down. They tab into the side of the body right here. And then they tab forward into this section here that was on the foot. Uh, they don't hold together all that well as it stands now, but how this works is um, this piece will come down and connect these two as well. Um, one thing that the instructions tell you to do is basically to tab this in first. Um, but I feel like this section here, which I'll show you, these are on double hinges. These will need to come in underneath and tab in there. I actually think that's a little bit harder to do just because of the way it's positioned. So I actually recommend um, tabbing these in first. Uh, I say that and I'm, I'm making it look difficult. So you want to try to tab these. Uh. All right, maybe we'll maybe we'll just do it the other way. But I didn't have have a problem before. You basically want to kind of tab these straight in to connect these. But I guess we'll just do it the other way because it's, it's not it's not working for me on live. So so go ahead and tab this in here, and then flip these pieces down, and they tab into the arm and the foot here and here. And that's what kind of locks everything into place up front. There we go. And like I said, then these pieces are supposed to kind of come in underneath from behind. Um, I feel like that's a little bit awkward to do, but I guess it's it worked, it worked just fine now and it was a lot easier than what I was trying before. So ignore my recommendations from before. We can close this up. And again, this section here, can flip around just like uh, MP Bumblebee. So you can have an Autobot symbol on one side that's gonna be shown in robot mode, but hidden in, um, in alt mode. So nice little addition. They didn't really need to do that, but it's cool that they did. Flip this down, flip these pieces down. And then with that space that was opened up by this space filler, you just flip the head up and it goes right inside there. And that's it. A very simple transformation for this guy.
He does have little wheelies on the bottom, on his back, and on these sections here, so he does roll around quite well, actually. His weapons, he has a couple places for them. Uh, these pieces that flipped up, you can store them right in here like that. So he has double-barreled guns up front. Or you can close these up. And like I said, uh, it's really hard to actually get these to work um, after you transform them. So like I can't get this to really come up very easily. Uh, you could use a spudger and come at it from underneath if you want. You can get direct access from that. But I find it's a lot easier if you plan to use it. Might as well do it when you're doing the foot transformation. So that's one option. The other option is these fillers here. You can flip them up. And you'll see there's a little tab slot there. You put in the gun. Close that up. And then you can have kind of side mounted guns. Um, I think this is a little awkward as well. Just because it's hard to get then position with the tab, and then get downward pressure on the tab. So they're, they're kind of precariously just sitting in there, but you get the idea. You got, you got some options in terms of weaponry for alt mode. Uh, I don't have really any alt mode vehicles. Uh, oh, I have two, actually. I still have this one from my my prototype review that I did at the end of last year, or prototype kind of um, video. And then, of course, the required comparison with Streak. And he's about one Streak in length, if you count these um, thrusters, or whatever you want to call them. And he's basically one Streak wide, one a little bit more than one uh, Animus wide. All right, so unfortunately, I'm not going to take any requests for alt mode alt mode comparisons because I really don't have any other figures I can think of that are in alt mode. So you guys are kind of stuck with that. 360-wise, though, he does look pretty good, pretty clean overall. Um, these pieces are a little bit of an eyesore to me just because they're kind of gappy. Like you can see through here a bit, um, and they just look, they don't sit all that flush to me with mine. I got to kind of always kind of finagle with it to try to get them to sit a little bit more flush. But that's a minor issue. But he looks really clean. Uh, he does have kind of a visible head syndrome back here. I was like, oh, I wonder how they're going to take care of that. And I was like, oh, they really don't take care of it. But I guess it's not bad. It's not totally obtrusive. But yeah, that's really it. All right, so I missed a lot of the comments as I've been doing um, the transformation, so I hope I didn't miss too many of it. But if you if you guys ask something, I'm gonna to try to go back a little bit. Uh, hey, Memo, how's it going? But if you guys uh, if you guys have anything else you want to ask, um, make sure to ask it again now that I'm paying attention. So Toji just said, I think so. We're definitely gonna try. I don't know what he's talking about. Maybe TFCon. Oh yeah, TFCon Baltimore. Yeah, that's actually in in our neck of the woods. Uh, Deluxe is near there. I'm about an hour away from there. Uh, T-Man lives in Baltimore, so it's really in his backyard for him. And um, I know T-Man, uh, TM Reviews is going to make his way down. <laughs> Pake is a dress shoe guy. I do wear dress shoes. I do rock dress shoes usually. Uh, Matt! Get out of here. He says, I'm a Crocs guy. I do not own any Crocs. Uh, Wild Bill, I don't own any Adidas. No, I'm, I'm definitely a, uh, mostly a sneakers or dress shoe guy. All right, so that's really it. There's not much else to talk about with this guy. Overall, he feels really feel pretty solid in um, in alt mode. Uh, this, this hollowness here doesn't really bother me all that much. And he has some nice translucent blue screens or glass in the front here some nice yellow details and, it, and the yellow does have pretty decent coverage so it doesn't look uh, too terrible it doesn't look spotty at all and you don't see too much of the blue um, making it like a kind of a greeny color so it's not too bad i mean nothing fancy going on with this guy as you might expect what's behind the trans translucent blue clear plastic in the front is there any detail inside 
Uh, there is not really any detail. I think just molded plastic pieces on the inside that were for this figure. But that's really it. So I'm going to go ahead and transform this guy back. As you imagine, he's, as you can imagine, it's going to be very quick to come back. Uh, but if you guys have any questions, we'll handle that at the end of the review. So let's go ahead and transform his head back. Like so. I'm going to flip this piece up. Untab this. We're going to flip these white pieces in. They kind of overlap. Um, one goes over top of the other. Don't jam it too hard because you might scratch the plastic. Go ahead and do that. Leave that like that for now. Then we're going to go ahead and take care of uh, these flaps and the arms. It's really much easier to try, instead of trying to get underneath here, just pull the arm down a little bit. And then flip those flaps up. Flip those flaps up. That's kind of a weird expression. I don't know what I'm getting, going for there. But anyways, go ahead and do that. And then, like I said, the reason why I think it is kind of awkward to tab in this way, especially on releasing it, you're going to put a lot of, like, angular pressure on that tab. So I would recommend just kind of untabbing this whole section like this and then untabbing it here. That's kind of like my, my main reason for recommending it before because otherwise you're going to be pushing, putting some, like, stress on these thin pieces of plastic and I feel like you might damage your figure. So... Uh, that's why I kind of recommended before trying to tab these in and then folding this down when going to alt mode, but clearly that didn't work all that well. So there we go. Let's get these arms untabbed from the side of the body. We're going to extend the midsection. Once again, you have to pull down this piece in order to get this rotated around. Uh, you can already see some paint marks here. Paint scrapage, not a big deal since they're very minor pieces that you're really not going to see. And then we can collapse the upper and lower body again. Don't forget the space filler now that we're done folding this down. Fold this up and close it up. The backpack, you want to flip down and then you have this big tab that goes into the back here. There we go. Like so. Then we'll go with the arms. The arms, again, are very simple. We're going to extend at the bicep, rotate it inwards 90 degrees. We're going to flip open this flap, pass the hand through, close it up, and we're done with that one. Same thing on this side. Extend, rotate, open this section, close it back up. Now we're done with the other hand. Split the legs here. All right, so we're going to come back here, open up the side of the foot, untab this kind of uh, ball of the foot piece, rotate this up, and this time we're going to bring this piece all the way back to the back of the calf. Once you do that, you're going to go ahead and use the double-jointed hinge here to get that in. Close this up, tab that in. And then you got one leg done, same thing on the other side here. So we want to kind of get this blue flat piece rotated all the way around on that hinge to the back. Open this up, untab. Again, uh, this piece keeps falling off, especially on mine. It's a minor annoyance. Close this up. Use the double hinge to get the foot in. Flip this ball of the foot in, and then use these two pegs. There we go. And if you did it the way I did it, you probably will have a loose foot. So make sure to have your trusty screwdriver in place to give it a bit of a tighten. Hopefully that will keep it a little bit tighter. While we're here, let's just do this side as well. All right, and with that, we have Spindrift or Masterpiece-styled Sea Spray back in his robot mode. Very simple, but very satisfying. Like I said, there's nothing too fancy about this guy, but everything that uh, he does do uh, doesn't have any really major concerns. I guess the only places where that were annoying were the, the foot here, and also the first couple times when you extend and uh, contract his 
midsection here is a little bit worrisome because you're like, where am I supposed to hold on to? You don't want to pull on the legs here because you don't want to do that. And there's not really a good place to grip at the waist. Um, and it's like I said, it's really tight the first couple times you do it. So just try it once or twice and it should loosen up a bit for you. Um, when I close it, I usually try to push it from the top here and not from the arms just in case I could shear off the shoulders. So I try to do it like that. All right, so where are we at? Hey, team man, finally showed up. Brad Batley says, Pig, you're meant to double hinge the bottom of that foot piece that's on the ball peg to make it flatter? Oh, yeah, you're, no, you're, you're right. Actually, that is correct. That's my bad. So you can actually, like you said, extend this down and fold it flat. Oh, I totally missed that. Thanks for that, Brad. Brad Batley. I guess I didn't notice that when I got it out of um, the box. I wonder if mine was transformed, mistransformed. Because I didn't notice that at all. But yeah, thinking about the instructions, they do tell you to um, move it out from there. So yeah, there we go. He is a little bit short. Let me do some comparisons again. He's ever so slightly shorter than what I showed off before. So here he is with Bumblebee. Here he is with Braun. And here he is with MP44. That way you guys have... Hey, Steve, how's it going? You, Steve, you never make it to these. Steve is one of my good buddies, Toy Dojo staff. Um, I only get to see him at TF Cons, and I haven't seen him in a couple years now since the COVID. Uh, really miss you, Steve. So let's see what else we got. Oh, Team Man was called out on his Unif Unicron transformation. Oh, no. Oh, no. Is the screwdriver part of every transformation? Uh, it seems to be for me. All right, so it looks like I got most of my most of the questions out of the way. Uh, T-Man says, does this have double jointed elbows? No, he does not. If you were on time, you would have known that. Oh, it looks like Bro Man's here. How's it going, Bro Man? Uh, I'm not doing an Iron Man pose. Uh, still no answer about the side panels. That's actually important. What? I'm sorry, Bro Man. I didn't see what the side panel question was. So if you ask it again, I'll try to get to it, but I totally missed it. And trying to go back, I'll probably miss it. Can you pull, put your camera down and do a side-by-side -side with Dune Rider? I do have Dune Rider. Hold on. All right. Uh, do the white panels sit flush? The white panels? Which ones? I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe when we were talking about something else. What white panels? White side panels. Oh, it was a question for alt mode. Uh, they should sit flush. All right, so let me get Dune Rider out. Give me, give me one second. You guys, hang on tight. Dune Rider, where is, where is Dune Rider? Uh, all right, give me a second. I, I thought I knew where. Oh, there he is. I see him. Here he is with Dune Rider. So Dune Rider is slightly taller. Antoine, how's it going, man? All right, so I think I I think I caught up. Uh, sorry, bro, man. I, I should have tried to get get to those questions before, but I'm trying to think. Maybe I can show off the panels. Um, they sit flush? I don't know what you mean by flush. Uh, if you're talking about in here, they do not. They do an overlap. But once they come out, they, they do sit pretty flush once they're transformed. Let me see if I can actually do it here without having to transform it all the way. Yeah, I mean, they, they sit pretty flush. Uh, this piece isn't going all the way down just because it's not tabbed in and this is not the correct mode, but it does sit pretty flush. Hopefully that answers your question. 
but they do not sit flush up here because they're too long. Oh, let me get this up. So, T-Man, why are you sending money? I don't understand. Why are you sending money? You're basically just giving free money. You could have just PayPal'd me or something if you really wanted to give me three bucks. But no, no. Now you want to give, like, YouTube 50 cents of that. Uh, Wild Bill, do you think he's the right height? Uh, honestly, I, I don't know the scale chart for beach, uh, sea spray. I'm not really a sea spray fan. So, yeah, T-Man T -Man got hit up really well today. You guys need to check out his live, uh, his uh, premiere, I think, that he put out today of his Unicron. And you need to donate to him. He's got he's got some baller fans in there. I need some baller fans in my live streams. I got 83 of you. You guys are all deadbeats except for except for uh T-Man. It's for for my Nike's. I do have some Nike's. What what shoes do I usually wear? I think I usually wear Nike's. And then I have some like kind of bougie ones like, you know, um like the uh the Bert, the Allbirds. And then I got some bands. And then I got some uh, Cole Haan sneakers. The Cole Haan sneakers are just kind of bougie. Oh, Deluxe, what is wrong with you guys? <laughs> I, I'm then was calling me out and Pay calls his fans deadbeats. See? See, you know, I was just joking about that. I'm not trying to pull an optobotomist or anything. I, 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 every time somebody don donates or uh, sends money, I always feel feel bad. I, I definitely don't want you guys to be spending money on me for sure. You guys uh, definitely save your money for this collection. Uh, the hobby, is, we all know it gets really expensive, especially in the third-party world. So please save your money. Um, luckily, I'm in a place where I don't need to worry about it. But I do appreciate all your thoughts. I do. I do appreciate them all. So, Optopagamus, that's messed up, man. That guy's trash. Who's that guy? Oh, I, I, Antoine said that guy's trash, and I was wondering what figure he's talking about, but I just realized it's me. It's me calling out Opt Optopagamus. You know, I shouldn't have said that. That's that's actually pretty mean for me to say. So, um, we're trying to make sure you get a YouTube check this year. <laughs> T-Man's calling me out for not uh, actually doing a lot of reviews as of late that that is true i've had my unicron for forever and um both t-man and tm reviews were like dude when are you gonna actually review that and i haven't even opened them up yet like a lot of things in my life um have been opened just because right now my my basement and my my uh, office are filled with a lot of other things that i need to clean up before i can even think it about opening up Unicron. Uh, I did hear that he does, a lot of people have had uh, problems with missing pieces. Um, so I really should do that so that um, I can get hooked up and make sure that I get some replacement pieces if I'm missing a baggie or something like that. Inu Tappy, why are you why are you guys doing this? I literally said it was a joke that I appreciated that you guys should save your money for, for, for the hobby. Send it over to Toy Dojo and get part of a... Um, a part of a toy or something like that. $5 is going to get you, what is it, one twentieth of a sea spray. <laughs> wow, Bill says, off the bottoms, we don't speak of him here. What are we talking about? The fight scenes are really good, nice and loud. What, what are we talking about? Oh, Deluxe says, you all take care. Going to go watch Kong and Godzilla. That movie is awful. I mean... You know, I don't hold a lot of expectations for that those type of movies, but oh man, some of the some of the story points in that just make no sense whatsoever. Inu Tabby, do you since you donated, do you have a special request? Any kind of a comparison you want to see? I, I feel like I should at least do something to uh, earn this four ninety nine. Not you, T-Man. Not you, Deluxe. Dare, do you need any comparisons? Do you want to see anything else? You mean, want me to do a jig? Uh, Broman, do you have a Cosmos? I do have a Cosmos. But you didn't donate, Broman, so I'm not going to... I'm not going to... Kong and Godzilla was fun? Eh. 
Nope, you already have them? All right, no, no. All right, there says, there says Cosmos, so I gotta go get them. You guys are like, dance review, monkey, dance. Give me that comparison. So here's your $4 worth there. Uh, this is the Ocular Max Cosmos. He's the only one I had. I did have, I think I did have the X Transbots one for a while uh, before I got rid of them for this guy. So we got basically all of our mini bots in. <laughs> Fraxic says, if I if you don't eat enough, you should wear a pair of Crocs on stream. You know what? Sure, if you don't eat enough for me to buy a pair of Crocs, what is that like? Twenty dollars. We we're like three dollars and one cents away from buying Crocs. So Crocs review. <laughs> Yeah, Kek, that's what I was thinking too about Godzilla vs. Kong. It's about the kaiju fights, but I actually didn't think the kaiju fights were all that either. And like the whole like sciencey stuff that they have, it's just like what? Have uh have you a world? Have you Toy World sea, sea Spray for a comparison? No, I don't have Toy World Sea Spray. The only Sea Spray I have is the X Transbots one. Sorry, I should have brought him back out again for the end of the review just so you guys have him. Yeah, looking at him side by side, like, when I first saw this, I was like, man, he's too fat. He's too, he's too tubby. Next to him, he makes him look really lanky, but I, you know, when I first saw him, I thought he was, like, really good in terms of scale overall. I didn't think he was too tubby, I didn't think he was too skinny, but definitely in comparison to this guy, he makes him look very, very chubby. Ten, ten, who was that? Was that Yuki? No, that was... Okay, <laughs> $3.01. $3 oh, no. And Frax, uh, Frax said uh, donated $10. Oh, man. Do I really need to do... Oh, man. I really need to do a Crocs review now. Oh, man. Yeah, the Mecha Godzilla. I, I mean, that was like the worst kept secret ever right and we all kind of expected it because they were like there's got to be some reason i hope you cut your toenails i actually did cut my toenails thank you very much but i'll i'll get a little pedicure with my wife before my crocs review mecha godzilla look like x transpot c spray in this scenario yeah because you know because the the movie godzilla is kind of you know chunky he is a bit thicker than, you know, the traditional Godzilla, man-in-the-suit Godzilla. He's got, like, the big legs, and he's got kind of the big uh, belly going on, so he definitely looks more like the Spindrift we have here. And the Mecha Godzilla really was really lanky. He didn't have, like, any, any meat on his bones. His arms were really long and lanky, his legs. And um, I don't know. I thought all that stuff was just kind of weird. I mean, I don't want to do spoilers with all that stuff, but, um, yeah, I mean... The kaiju fights were okay, and the story was just kind of crazy. I mean, I definitely preferred the King of Monsters movie overall. I mean, that also had, like, the human element that was really pretty terrible and the, and the weird science-y stuff there. But the, the kaiju fights on that were awesome. Like, even the Mothra fight, and then they had Rodan on there. Like, Rodan was one of those characters that I really didn't care about at all. And then he they made him look so awesome in King of Monsters. I was... I was so psyched when you saw him come out and doing those twirls. That was cool. All right, so we're we're <laughs> American Dad Bod Godzilla. <laughs> I'm definitely getting there as of late because of COVID. I have not been working out. Keck says King of Monsters was better. Agreed. Yeah, uh, definitely for sure. But yeah, I mean we're getting off topic here. Um, I gotta go look up how much Crocs cost because now I apparently have to do a Crocs review. But um, I, think, I think we've answered most of your questions. Like I said, this was a pretty simple review. Wanted to just get this out there. There are some really good comparison pictures that are in the thread already. I know Razorwire, uh, a local buddy of mine who also bought from Toy Dojo, he came and picked his up and he was doing some comparisons with uh, Spindrift 1.0 as well. So um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Thanks for joining as usual. Let's see, Unicron and Crocs. That would actually probably fit. My feet are pretty small. 
Uh, Memo said, I never made it through King of Monsters without falling asleep. All right. Yeah, congr actually, I, I, I did bleed earlier today, but uh, not not from, from this guy. So in any case, if you guys need to pick this up from um, Toy Dojo, click on the link in the descri description below. And if you're lucky, it might be coming from me on the East Coast in Virginia. So if, it's, if you get a uh, confirmation number or a tracking coming from Virginia, uh, hit me up. Let me know. And then I'll maybe I'll sign the box for you or something like that. Uh, Samuel Vegas says, which do you like better, X -trans Transbots or F or Fans Toys? Uh, I don't know which one I'll keep in my collection. To be perfectly honest, I, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to mess with this guy again. I haven't messed with him in a really long time. I remember his transformation was a little bit more annoying. Um, and then there's some pieces like this that just look kind of weird. So I got to see which one. I'm probably going to mess with this one a little bit more and see which one I like better. And then maybe I'll watch TM reviews to see what his uh, comparison video is. <laughs> BB03 says the donations went to his head. Yeah. Uh, Pake does, doesn't pack things very well, FYI. All right. All right, that's kind of a mean call out. Toy Dojo, apparently I'm not doing a good enough job for of packing. So if, if you get all, if yours comes from the East Coast, from Virginia, it's all banged up, that wasn't me. <laughs> You're fired. You don't, I don't even, you don't even pay me. I just boxed up like 50 spindrifts for you today at no cost. And I'm storing all your stuff for, all your inventory here for free. So if I'm fire, I'm keeping all these toys that you have here. <laughs> Any case, all right, we're go we're going on and on. All right, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna hang up here. This is my first po purchase from Toy Dojo. Oh man, I'm making sure it's it's you're, I'm making sure it's going getting to T Man super late. Hey, Lil, thanks for coming late. All right, thanks everyone. I hope you have a good one. We'll talk to you next time.